What's up, fellas? Say hi to my dog, Kobe. Kobe, say hi to the fellas. That's Kobe, the hoe catcher. He wants to go play. All right, man, do your thing, bro. We about to go to work pretty soon. So today I want to do something a little bit different. I'm going to tell you how it is um, I start my day. You know, I believe in mental. You got to have your mental right. You got to have your health right. And I believe in multiple streams of income. It doesn't matter how much each of those are. It's just multiple streams of income. So, <clears throat> when I start my day, I'm up between 3.30 in the morning to 4 o'clock in the morning. That's the time I get up. First thing I do is have two to three glasses of water. People say the most important meal of the day is breakfast. No, no, no. The most important thing for you to do every morning is drink water. When you're sleeping at night, your body's already fasting and it's break fast. So that water gets your system going. It's time for you to start flushing out all the bullshit you ate the day before. So I have my three glasses of water. I put on some coffee. I put on the news. I got to listen to what's going on in the world. We get a lot of shootings here in America. Fuck, there's three, four of them a day. It's crazy. Politicians lying the whole night. But I got to see what's going on in the world. And so I put on the news. I mean, while I'm listening to the news, I think, what am I, what do I need help with mentally? And I'll Google that shit and look up quotes for it. And I'll read about 100 quotes every morning. And then I'll post one to my Instagram. That's why I want you to get on my Instagram, Demont Murray. Look at the quotes I post. I post some really good shit. So now, it's time for me to go work out. And I get into the gym. My gym opens up at 5 a.m. So I get in there at 5 a.m. I got my gallon of water with me, scoop of creatine in there, and I have my protein shake. I'm ready to roll. And when I walk in the gym, I put on, I go into my audiobook account. I got probably like 70 books. Pick an audio book that I'm going to work out to. Now, I get the news out of my head. This is some positive shit. And on my workout, I start off with abs. I do 15 minutes of abs, lower, upper, mid. Then I do arms. Bam, knock out my biceps, triceps. And then whatever exercise I'm doing for that day. So if it's a Monday, I do chest. Tuesday, I do back. Wednesday, I do shoulders. Thursday, I do legs. And Friday, whatever I started off with for the week, that's what I run with. So in this case, the chest. So Friday, I do chest. So the following week, I'm starting off with legs. Friday, I end with legs. It takes me an hour, and then I drink that gallon of water. And I'll actually dust off a gallon of water within an hour of me working out. And let me tell you how important that is. Your body, when you drink that much water, your body thinks you just ate a Thanksgiving dinner. So your metabolism speeds up. But it's not burning down food, it's burning down your body fat. I'll take a quick piss, jump upstairs, do 30 minutes of cardio. And then I like to get my ass out of there by 6.30 a.m. Because I gotta hurry up and get home. Because at 6.45 a.m., Finviz, it's a stock screening website. The update is stocks. It tells me what stocks are jumping. So I put in a deposit, and I have about, I don't know, I'm probably like in 15 companies. So typically I'll put in a deposit and then spread that money out throughout all my trades. But I like to day trade. Day trading is fun. You're allowed three day trades a week unless you got over 25,000 in your account, which you're allowed three. So I look at that stock scanner and see what penny stocks are jumping. And day trading is like this. Say I'm about to go rob a bank. I put on a ski mask and I rush up in that motherfucker, grab as much money as I can and get my ass the fuck up out of here. With day trading, I could be in and out in 10 minutes. And then I'll take that money and then I'll spread it out throughout my stocks. Hopefully I didn't lose, hopefully I gained. You can't be too greedy with 
with day trading. You got to be in and out. Mr. Hit and Run. So then after that, I do my trading for the day. I go wash my ass. And then come down and do something with this YouTube video channel. Either I'm shooting a video or I'm doing something in the descriptions or buying software. I always do something. And then on top of that, I have four tenants. So I got to do something around the house. Now, I live with four girls. I love living with all women. It's pretty awesome. I've been a landlord for a long time, and living with women, all women, is, is the best. But I have learned a lot about women, living with all women. Uh, the odds that your girlfriend is faithful to you, or that vagina is on yours while you up in it. The women can do whatever they want with it. You can think to yourself, your girl's uh, faithful to you, but the odds are no. But I got to do something around the house. Make sure the lady take out the trash. They ain't never going to take out the trash. I got to do something with the yard. I got to make them happy. So then at that point, I go on property radar. Now it's time for me to pick a foreclosure for the day. So I go on there. All right, this one looks good. And then bam. Oh, by the way, here, let me show you. That's my card. I'm Captain Save a Home. There's me. Captain Save a Home. So then I go knock on the door, see if I can make a deal, leave my card. But on the way there, now I'm doing my driving job. So on the way to go see that foreclosure, I'm making money along the way there. Because there ain't no, I ain't got to be there at a certain time. I'll get there whenever I want. They about to lose the shit. Hopefully I can crack a deal, but if not, it's okay. And then the rest of the day, I put on my Spanish lessons, audio book. And then I'm practicing my Spanish throughout the day. And then I start talking to the girls. And when it comes to the girls, I only talk to them in Spanish. And doing that every day, now I'm starting to learn. Now um, I'm starting to understand what they're telling me before I even translate it. So between the audio books and talking to the girls on Instagram in Spanish I'm getting there with my Spanish so then I finish my day I get home typically it's, it's long from the time I'm driving the time I get home it's a 12 hour day I get home and then I cook I like cooking my own food cooking is one of my favorite hobbies I've done hundreds of five star ready recipes and then I cook something take my ass to bed, do it all over again the next day. And you think a man like me would be a hot ticket in America, but it's not like that here. I used to be in a limousine business. Seven years I spent in that business and I met a lot of celebrities. And the way these girls treat men that is famous they like all on a job. I mean, just on them. And I don't get that over here because I'm not famous. So all these chicks over here, they looking for a dude who's famous, super rich. If you just are average Joe, they don't fuck with you. But where I do get that treatment, anywhere else but America, any other country. I go to their country, they treat me just like I would see my clients being treated, all on them. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. That's why I love traveling. Going to these different countries, because I'm going to get treated like I'm a celebrity. I'm not going to get that shit over here. They ain't going to treat me good. And people ask me all the time, like, oh, you go bring one of these girls over here and marry them? No. I'll tell you why. My second wife. She wasn't from America. She was from the island. She wasn't an American citizen. She treated me so fucking good up until I married her. And, you know, I went ahead and did it, got married. And now she's a citizen. Oh, now the American girl culture come out. Now she can act like all the other girls. Now all of a sudden I'm being called stupid and you're an idiot. Like all that. I'm like, 
do you really think I would have married your ass if I knew you was going to treat me like this? So no, nah, man. I ain't never just going to find me a girl in another country to bring it over here and marry her. I ain't doing that shit, bro. I learned my lesson. I'd rather go over there and visit them. I'd rather go over there and have them treat me like a celebrity and just enjoy myself over there. So when I'm here in America, it's just my office, bro. These women don't know how to treat me. You would think a man like me would get treated like a king over here? Nah. I just get my money. So think about it. Get your take on the audio books. That shit you're thinking, whatever you think in your brain, your eyes gonna show it to you. Get some audio books. Start to learn a new language. Trade some stocks. Get you a rental. Do some real estate deals. It's possible to squeeze it all in. You know what I'm saying? And get your money and go travel and go enjoy yourself. These women are, no matter what country but America, these women are incredible. You wanna get treated like a celebrity? You gotta get the fuck up out of here, bro. You have to. You ain't gonna get treated like a celebrity. You just your, your average Joe, bitches ain't checking for you until they burnt out, until they got like three kids, four kids, and they looking for a man to take care of them, a man with benefits. But all the little young ones, with no kids in America, they ain't fucking with you unless you're famous. They going after the superstars, the NBA players. They going after them. But I'll tell you where you get a bunch of women with no kids, 20s, 30s. You get it anywhere but America. Bounce the fuck up out of here. These bitches treat me like shit. I'm used to it now. But the money's here. We need that paper. So get your cheese. Go see the world, man. You ain't got nothing to be scared about. You know, every day I listen to the news, dude, we got mass shootings, what, three, four mass shootings every fucking day. And you somehow, some way, can be safe with dealing with that bill shit, then you're gonna be safe over there. And I just bring that up because I get people to ask me all the time, is it safe over there? I'm like, fuck, dude, are you watching the goddamn news? We got like 20 people a day getting shot and killed in this country. At least the cartels targeting uh, motherfucking gangsters. Over here, our shootings is just random people. You could just be walking in a convenience store. And motherfucking, we got toddlers over here shooting motherfucking shooting their teacher. They had a motherfucking kid on a on the news the other day. He in his diaper. Motherfucker walking around with a diaper and a strap trying to shoot it. It was all on the news. So. Any day you're going to die, so you might as well go out and enjoy yourself. But I look forward to doing some more videos. Like my shit. Share it. Share it with your boys. Check out my other Freaky tale stories. Send a little donation if you can. Cash out Patreon. But I'm going to be doing some shit, man. I'm working on some things, bro. I'm a grinder. I'm a grinder. Watch out for me, man. I'm trying to do it, bro. I'm trying to do it. I'll start my way, y'all.